Welcome to The Simple Startup, a beginner's guide to starting your own business. In these startup stories, you will hear about individuals who have helped guide young people through starting their own business, have started their own business, or who have been parents of kids who have started their own business. I hope you'll get a lot out of these stories and it will help break down that barrier for you that anybody can do this and everybody should do this. You can find more of these stories at thesimplestartup.com. I hope to see you there. Hey everyone, this is Rob Phelan. I'm the author of The Simple Startup, and I'm here with Dave McKeegan, who is an expat living in Costa Rica, and he and his wife are founders of Greenback Tax Services, a, what do we call it, a tax preparation service for um, U.S. citizens living abroad. Would that be a good summary of it, Dave? Yep, exactly. Awesome. So, Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. We're going to kind of chat about your experience with teaching kids how to start their own businesses. So, you know, you have your own business, you and your wife set it up together, but we really want to focus on teaching kids how to start their own businesses. So what is it that you're doing that um, you know, is kind of unique? So we have a uh, homeschool group here and our oldest son who is 10 years old uh, was doing, you know, learning projects and stuff like that with his homeschooling group. And the group had asked us a couple months ago if we could do a program for the kids on entrepreneurship. Um, and yeah, you know, Originally, we were pretty intimidated by that because uh, it's kind of like saying, can you teach history? It's like, well, th that's huge, right? It's, you know, <laughs> th there's a lot in that. Um, and entrepreneurship is the same thing. And it's intimidating trying to think, all right, well, how are you going to teach kids or anybody for that matter? Um, you know, the basics that they need to know and then just sort of guide them through the path. Uh, and make sure you don't leave anything out and make sure you don't uh, miss a major part of it that you just happen not to be thinking about at that point in time. Yeah, I, I find that um, I'm a math teacher as well. So I teach public high school math and the thought of going back to like an elementary school level and trying to, you know, how do you teach ele elementary school um, child math? I'm like, oh gosh, like to break it down into like that foundational level is something that I would really have to go and like learn how to do because yeah, it's, it's different to do it at a high level versus breaking it down at the, um, the foundational level for kids. Yeah. So what'd you do? Exactly. Well, so I heard about uh, the simple startup on the choose FI podcast. And when I heard about it, I was super excited because I was like, okay, this sort of gives me a tool that I can use to walk step by step through uh, and explain it to kids. It's going to, it's not going to be like other business books that have all the jargon and, all that kind of stuff where the kids are just going to be like looking at you with blank looks in their eye. Like, you know, what is this guy droning on about? Um, so we got a couple copies of the book and you know, this is right around the time that COVID hit. Uh, so everybody was locked up in their house anyway. And you know, we decided as a group that we would run this for the kids and I would be the teacher. The kids would dial in uh, twice a week, you know, zoom calls twice a week and try and get these guys going with a couple of businesses. And how did it go? So I think you told me that you just finished up this, this class, this course on Tuesday, right? Yep, Tuesday was our last class. Uh, we're trying to get a party scheduled for everybody to get together and uh, celebrate going through it. And you know, the kids who have product businesses can bring some of their products or uh, you know, explain what their products are gonna be when they have them manufactured and stuff like that. Um, it went really well. Uh, so again, it's, it was a difficult time to be doing something because you're not interacting with the kids one-on-one. -on -one. Everything's going on in Zoom calls and you know, some of the kids live less than a quarter mile away, uh, but you're still not meeting face-to-face -to, -face to discuss these things. Uh, but slowly the feedback started trickling in from some of the parents, talking to my wife, talking, you know, it, as things loosened up, we'd see them around and stuff like that. And they said the kids absolutely loved it. Uh, they said they were learning a bunch. You know, they were uh, sitting down and doing the reading without being told to do the reading. They were writing out business ideas. They were drafting business plans. They were drawing up uh, the finances and you know, how much it's going to cost to buy this and how much I can make selling that, uh, you know, all these different things. And so the parents were really excited because the kids were learning. And the kids were excited because uh, they felt I think empowered to do this, empowered to start their own business. 
It is a cool project for that because it's one of the few times, at least in like public school, I love this because it's one of the few times that you kind of hand the reins to kids and say, there's very little guidance about what you need to do here. You get to follow your interests, your passions, go the direction you want to go with this. And you can pretty much take it whatever way you want and turn it into whatever kind of business you want. And a lot of kids don't get that kind of freedom in their classwork or in their school experience a lot. So it can be a really, you know, life-changing experience. I know for me, like I did this at 15 years old and it's like one of the most memorable experiences I had while I was in school. Yeah. So what, um, give me some examples. Like what were some of these businesses that these kids came up with? Cause you said they were 10, your son's 10 years old and how what was the oldest kid? I think the oldest kid was probably about 14. Okay. And so yeah, what and were some of the businesses? So we've got two of the kids are doing baked goods. One is doing uh, like cakes and sweets and stuff like that. And he's selling it at a weekly market that they have in town here. And I think when I spoke to him on Tuesday, he said that uh, Tuesday morning was the first time he went to the market and he sold $50 worth of goods on Tuesday. So he was pretty excited. <laughs> wow. All right. Um, another, another person selling baked goods is selling uh, vegan baked goods. Uh, and she is going to be doing it at a shop in town. Her parents own a shop, so she's going to be making the goods and selling them in, they have like a back corner of the shop that has like a little stand where, you know, people can come in and, uh, they use it for here. They call it supper club where like a local chef will come in, make food and come with your own containers to pick it up. So she's going to set up and sell on the days they do supper club. So you have a lot of foot traffic coming in mm -hmm. and she's going to, it's like an add on. Yeah. You can add on dessert uh, in addition to the supper club. Uh, one of the guys is doing a tutoring business and he went from having the idea to now having three students in his tutoring club. Uh, so he's pretty excited about that. I think he's charging. I don't remember. I want to say it's six or $7 per 30 minute tutoring session. Uh, so he's starting to make a decent clip of money as well. Um, his brother, who is also in the program, is making kombucha, uh, which is, you know, like that healthy probiotic beverage. Tastes like uh, straight vinegar, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he's actually, so he's doing a double fermentation process. I was talking to his dad the other day, and he was saying that it was uh, really an amazing learning opportunity because he was mixing science with business. And so he was researching the science behind the fermentation process and how long you have to do it and what the proper way to do it is and everything like that. Um, and I tried his kombucha the other day. It was great. He, you know, he's doing, what was he doing? Strawberry and basil flavored oh. kombucha. So I guess you, you, the first fermentation process is where uh, you're making kombucha and then you add the fruit into it for a second fermentation process and that's where it gets the flavor and it gets the carbonation and stuff like that mm -hmm. uh so yeah again that's kind of mixing uh science with uh with business uh what else we have so a brother sister team are doing a mime business so you can send them a picture and uh, whatever words you want. It's basically like a video greeting card, uh, but as mimes. And, uh, yeah, so that's kind of a cool one. They're going to be up on, I don't know if they've launched it on Facebook yet or not. Uh, but, yeah, they had a great time doing it. They did a big market research study. Uh, they went out to all their friends and family. You got a bunch of feedback, like we're learning how much different people spend on things like greeting cards each year and, yeah, is it better to do something that's online? Because in times like the COVID crisis, you're not worried about receiving something and letting it sit for three or four days before you feel safe opening it up. Yeah, you're yeah. just getting it as an email. You can open it right up. Uh, and then my son, he changed business ideas about midway through. Uh, so he's a little bit behind, uh, but he's making a Nosara Monopoly board game. Uh, so the town we live in is called Nosara mm -hmm. and he's taking the idea of Monopoly and putting it, building the Monopoly board for our town. And he did a big market, you know, market research survey as well. And a lot of 
the feedback we got was people don't like all the building, all the construction. So they don't want it to be, you know, you build four houses and then you build a hotel and all that. So uh, we were kicking around different ideas. And I think the one he came up with was that in, he's going to, instead of building houses, you can plant trees. And then when you have planted four trees, you can get a family of howler monkeys because uh, there's howler monkeys in the area. <laughs> And yeah, you know, then the rent goes up on that property because you have monkeys on your property. And Added features, yes. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> That's very cool. So he's like adapting it to um, you know the needs of the market, which is a, yeah, exactly. an awesome way to build a business. Take an existing idea and make it better in some way, or change something about it. Yep. And then you sent me a um, a commercial that one of uh, your kid groups made. Um, they were doing what homemade slime or something like that, and you sent me like a video commercial that these guys made. Yep. So that is a calming slide, or sorry, calming slime business. Uh, and yeah, that's uh, also a 10 year old girl doing that one. And th that was just the funniest commercial, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. She put that together with her sister and her brother and uh, you know, did the editing, did you know, the whole business plan, you know, running all the numbers for the business and everything like that. Uh, so I thought that was you know, just amazing what they did there. And like, again, just the skills of besides even the business of making the slime, which again, kind of a sciencey business sort of thing, but they've learned to create a video, an edited video that communicates a message and sells. I mean, there's just so many different skills that just went into that, even that one little yeah. piece of the project. Like it's amazing. Um, so what was your like favorite part of this project? What was the best experience you had? Ooh. I guess for me, it was, you know, when the kids are drafting their business ideas and, you know, they're starting to put down some of the concepts, like, this is what I wanted to do. This is uh, what we're going to need to do that. This is how it's going to make money. And reviewing those with the kids and giving them feedback on that. Uh, because, yeah, I would say I'm sort of a business geek. Like I, I can sit around and you know, talk about different business models and stuff like that all day long with people. I just really enjoy doing that. Uh, and to do that with kids who are super excited about you know, a slime business. Like I've never talked to anybody about a slime <laughs> business before. I've never uh, talked to anybody about uh, you know, like these video greeting cards and things like that. And just getting the kid perspective on it and seeing how excited they are about it and things like that. Uh, and so just helping them tweak around the edges to make it a little bit more marketable, a little bit more efficient. Yeah. Uh, like talking to the guy who's doing the tutoring business, it's like, well, who's your client here? You have to really understand who your client is because you want to be able to serve your client. And is your client the mom who's you know, hiring you to uh, watch their kid and teach them for 30 minutes or an hour? Or is the client, the student, the one that's trying to learn? So, yeah. You know, how are you going to like effectively they're both clients and you have to understand uh, what both of them are looking for and be able to meet both sets of needs. And yeah, you, know, you can just see the kids uh, having these conversations and you know, asking them these questions and like just the lights going off over their head as they're thinking about this and you know, understanding it like, okay, I'm going to go back and work on this. And like, you know, they go off and yeah, you know, two days later they come back with like, 10 more pages of information about what they want to do and how they're changing it and stuff like that. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's definitely something that um, a lot of my kids had to figure out too. They're like, they're marketing something to teens or elementary school kids. And it's like, well, yes, they might be the user, but they're not the ones buying. So you've got two different um, people you have to market to that the parent or the adult and then the kid as well. Yeah. So talking about business ideas, this is um, some of the uh, questions that came from the Facebook group were about like, my kid doesn't have an idea or I don't have an idea. And it's a big challenge for a lot of people to overcome sometimes is just like getting an idea and then picking one and then moving on that and like making it happen. How did you kind of uh, navigate that? Were kids just full of ideas or were there some of them who needed a little bit more kind of guidance or support in how to find an idea? We talked a lot about problems and identifying problems. Uh, and the way I was trying to explain it to the kids was, you know, anytime you see a problem, uh, there's two ways you can look at that. You can look at it as an obstacle, you know, something that's insurmountable, something you can't get past, or you can look at it as an opportunity. 
Uh, and if you can train your mind to start seeing these problems as opportunities, and you can figure out how to do something about the problem, how to lessen the problem, how to uh, avoid the problem, how to take the pain away from somebody, something like that, then you're becoming an entrepreneur. Because uh, that's sort of, in my opinion, the heart of it. It's you know, fixing problems for people, uh, making their life better, adding value uh, to you know, your clients or your customers or your employees. Uh, and that's you know, sort of the bread and butter behind it. So we spent a lot of time talking about that. And I think from that, they started coming up with ideas. Well, you know, so-and-so was saying that uh, uh, she has a conference call every day and she needs somebody to watch her son. And so if I do a tutoring business, I can work with him on math and reading during that time that she has a call. So you're solving a problem for somebody, but you're also adding a benefit there as well. It's not just having a babysitter or putting the TV on or something like that. And so that also became his sales pitch to the local moms in the area saying, if you have things you need to do, if you need a little time, you know, I can do some math and some reading or, you know, whatever it is with your children while they're off, while you're off doing what you need to do. And so awesome. you take a problem and you kind of try and look at it in a different way, see you know, how you can work around it, you know, who has the problem and how you can fix it. And then you, you know, run with it. You see, all right, you know, let's try it. Let's get it out in the market, see what people say, see how they feel about it. And this, um, it kind of brings up something that I was thinking about as well, that when I was doing the Simple Startup book, there was the option to just kind of come up with one business, say, okay, this is going to be a how-to guide for starting a lemonade stand. And the problem that I came up with was it took away the creativity from the student. Um, yeah. That if you're just saying, okay, guys, we're all going to start the exact same business. This is what um, you're going to go through these like, exercises to start your business. It was just too scripted. It was too much like school. And it didn't, it didn't have the end result that we wanted, which was where you get kids problem solving. So looking for problems and, you know, potentially coming up with solutions for them as well. And you can do that for like a hundred problems. You can do it every single day. Like as you walk down the street, you will start spotting problems and you'll start thinking, okay, what would a solution to that look like? And Nine times out of 10, it's like, it's not something you would ever make a business on, but there's one usually that's like worth writing down. You're like, okay, there's a potential business idea. And by the end of a week, you've got, you know, 20 of them that you could work off of if you wanted to. So, that's the, it's a blessing and a curse, right? Yeah. <laughs> Once you train your mind to do this, it's hard to go back. Yes. And uh, so you're constantly seeing opportunities. And, you know, if you, if you look at successful entrepreneurs or if you look at uh, even just like a lot of the business books and things like that, they warn entrepreneurs against shiny object syndrome. Yes. And that's effectively what shiny object syndrome is. It's when you're constantly seeing opportunities out there for other businesses or other ways to adapt your business. Uh, and you just, you know, sometimes you need to be focused. So, you know, I think for kids, they're learning it for the first time. So it's not as big an issue. Uh, but, you know, you do want your brain to work like that. You want to see opportunities everywhere. Yes. And actually, that was something that I liked about, um, you know, the approach you took that you said, all right, we're going to brainstorm these ideas, look at different problems, pose maybe one or two. And then did you use the, um, so in the book, there's a chart where you put all your ideas down. You kind of try and find the one that is the easiest to start and the least expensive to start. So it's a, a double axis grid and your simple startup should be the one that you're like most excited about. And then also would be the easiest to start. So it requires the least amount of, time, yep. money, equipment, skills, and so on. Um, so you did that with your kids as well? Yeah, we talked through that a bunch. And you know, just to rewind, like when my wife and I started our first business 10 years ago, uh, 11 years ago, we actually did a very similar exercise. Uh, so we sat down and we scripted out a list of 100 different business ideas. And we had you know this whole long list of business ideas. And then we started writing out um, what we wanted our life to be like and filtering the business ideas through that. And so I was trying to explain that you know, to kids mm -hmm. where it's like, okay, you know, you want to be super excited about this because it's not easy. Like you have to put in effort, you have to put in time. Uh, and you know, you also want to make sure that you have the resources to get this off the ground. Uh, you know, nobody age 10 to 12, 14 is going to be raising VC money or anything like that. So, you know, having it be something you're excited about, fairly easy to get going, and, 
you know, if you need parental support, making sure your parents can help you and support you in that. Uh, or, you know, we went through all that with the kids to make sure that uh, they were clear on how to do that and what was or wasn't possible. Yeah, because like for this first business or if you're doing a project like this, like you want the idea that they're excited about because they'll stick with it, but then also something that is easily like accessible and they can start it very quickly. So ideally avoiding something that is seasonal. So like if it's June right now, maybe don't start a business that requires like winter break or you know needs cold weather for it right. to work. Like you want something that could be started right now. They may have a great idea keep it in the bank for another time. But certainly like when you're doing a project like this, something that they can start right now. Another example being something that you could do in the current pandemic situation. So if your business requires you going out and giving free hugs, like it's not the right time for that business. <laughs> <laughs> so the and timing of a business is super important. And manageable for a kid. You know, yes. uh, my son's first idea, it was just too big of an idea. It wasn't a bad idea. It was just too big of an idea. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, trying to rein him in a little bit and getting, get him to an idea that was more manageable for a kid. Well, that first idea for sure. Cause like there are great ideas. Like I have kids every year who will say, Oh, I want to like start, I want to create an app for this. And I'm like, you know, it's an awesome idea, but the, the time it will take you to build the skills you need or to find the people you need. Like it's just something that, is maybe let's do it after you do a simple startup, do a basic business first, learn a lot of skills, yeah. make mistakes. And then the next one you do can be a bigger business for sure. Yep. All right. Um, so other things you did, you added and changed some of the things from the book, which I really love, like you made it your own. What was something that wasn't in the book that you added in? Well, there's two adaptions that I put in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, what I did is I did it as a PowerPoint presentation. So I'd, tell the kids, read this chapter, and then I'd uh, present the chapter and we'd talk through it uh, in one hour calls that we'd do twice a week. Uh, the first one I had them do was a and l uh, There's a cash flow forecast in there. There's a balance sheet. Uh, but I also showed them how to put together a p and uh, so that they could track as they're making money where it's going and how much things are costing them. The p and uh, is to make profit loss. Profit loss, yeah or income statement, yeah, yes. it goes by either. Um, and then what I noticed is as the kids were developing their business ideas, uh, one of the local supper clubs here uh, said, you know, if the kids want to come to the dinner pickup and sell their uh, kombucha or sell their baked goods, they're welcome to do that. And I said, oh, that'd be great. Do you mind if I have the kids reach out to you? And, you know, the restaurateur said, yeah, that's no problem. I'll be at the restaurant all day Monday or, you know, they can get me on WhatsApp. And so I told this to the kids and they were super excited because, you know, this is like saying, all right, you know, here is a captive audience that is already buying food and you can sell into that without any additional cost, without any additional advertising. Yeah. You know, as a business, it's like a ideal situation. But like also and, how awesome is that that you're having 10 to 14 year olds approach an adult business owner and say, look, Hey, I want to negotiate like being able to come and sell in this particular place. Like who, what, 10, what, what 10 to 14 year old does that? It's awesome. That's what was happening. The kids were, nobody did it in the first week. They were all nervous. And so I was like, okay, yeah, you know, every entrepreneur at some point is going to be nervous or afraid of the next step or the leap or, you know, whatever it is. So I did a presentation for them about fear and fear setting and you know, trying to fear setting is like Tim Ferriss's uh, way to overcome fear or way to you know, rationalize you know, fear so that you're not afraid or you figure out a way to get through it or around it. And so you know, I said, okay, what's the best case? What's the worst case? You know, what's the most likely case? of you know you reaching out to this local restaurant owner and you know a week later the kids had all reached out then and they were in conversations about okay you know you can come this day you can come that day like all this kind of stuff but i think they were just too nervous in the beginning because you know they're 10 they're 12 they're 14 years old and you're saying all right this is somebody maybe you know maybe you don't know you've probably seen them around because it's a pretty small town but what's the worst case scenario here? 
And, you know, the worst case scenario is he says no, and you're not allowed to do it. Well, that's the case you're in anyway. So your worst case is your current case. So you really don't have anything to lose by going out there and talking to him. And when you explain things to people that way, it's like, again, it's that little light that goes off over their head. They're like, okay. And then it's like they can draft an email or they can draft a text or whatever it is to arrange a meeting, uh, ask their folks to drive them over to the restaurant or whatever, ride their bike over. And, you know, it's just one more obstacle that they're learning to overcome, one more thing that they're learning so that, you know, obviously this is small stakes, but if you practice this over and over again in your life, uh, you're going to be able to do it when the stakes are much higher. Awesome. Yeah. That's um, super advice. And that fear of failure is something that we all um, feel at some point and being able to find a way to normalize that, let them know that, you know, it's okay to feel that, but you can still move forward and, you know, overcome that, you know, that fear that we'll call it. Um, so yeah, that's awesome stuff. All right. So I want to go to a couple of questions from the Facebook group that were specifically for you. Cause I kind of announced that we were going to have a chat and there was a couple of questions that came up. Um, so let's see. Becky asked, uh, what does he teach about making sure that they follow the law with their business? So in terms of like appropriate licenses, zoning requirements, taxes, um, like, is there anything that you considered from that front or is it kind of like your kids, you get a free for all sort of thing? Well, so, you know, we run a tax business. So from a tax perspective, uh, you have to be earning over $400 uh, before you're required to report self-employment tax and all this kind of stuff. For most of the businesses these kids were doing, $400 would be phenomenal uh, in profit, not in revenue, but in profit, uh, that'd be pretty phenomenal. So we didn't really get into a lot of that stuff. And... Yeah, my advice would be for kid businesses, you don't really have to worry about this stuff too much. Um, and don't let it be an obstacle. Don't let it get in the way of getting things started. Uh, because, yeah, you don't want them to have reasons to quit or reasons to stop. You want to be encouraging them to work through all the steps, get it out there, get a prototype out there, and, uh, you yeah, know, see how it goes. Like I've seen very successful people, you know, with MBAs and raising money and all this kind of stuff, spend a lot of time and a lot of money focusing on the optimal structure and the optimal uh, tax you know, setup and all this kind of stuff. And they never get around to actually doing the business. And so it doesn't work. Uh, so I think what I would say is focus on just doing the business and getting that going. And then if it's successful, you can worry about the other things later. Yeah, and that'll and be a learning experience too. I think it's important to maybe not like spell out what the laws are, but certainly like some of the considerations that should go into it. So like if you have a kid who wants to do a food business, let them know like, okay, your preparation for, of the food needs to be something that's important. You need to make sure you're using clean surfaces. You need to make sure that, you know, you're not handling the food, you're washing your hands really well, like just basic things. And then if like the customer asks about it, you can say, yeah, you know, I make sure that my prep area is always clean. Um, everything is individually wrapped or whatever it is, just something that shows that you've given it consideration. So yeah, you may not have to adhere to the strictest food preparation laws in your state country, whatever it is, but letting kids know that that's an important factor is certainly something you can do. Yeah. Um, all right. We got... So the question was, how do you handle taxes? Uh, another one was like about setting up a business entity. Did you, did any of your kids do that? So like an LLC or did they go any further than did they, an S corp, anything like that? Oh, we didn't do any of that in this program. Uh, again, the businesses we're talking about are fairly small. Um, we did, however, do this with our son. Uh, he was very interested in how to set up a business. And so we walked him through the process of setting up a Wyoming LLC. Uh, we chose Wyoming. It's a pretty good state to incorporate in. Uh, the fees are pretty low. They're pretty, um, they're very easy to deal with. Uh, I guess Wyoming doesn't have a huge population. So when you email somebody at the state department, they actually write you back. Uh, and so like we did walk my son through this process of setting up a Wyoming LLC 
Uh, and you know, the whole process from start to finish probably only took about half an hour, maybe an hour, uh, and it cost about a hundred dollars. Uh, we weren't doing it through one of these services. We just did it directly on the website with my son. Uh, so yeah, you, know, you can do that again. Uh, you don't have to do that for these you know, kid led businesses and you don't have to do that in the beginning. Like, you know, if you get a business up and running and it's successful, you can do that at a later point. Yes. Like I have a student um, who two years ago started his own landscaping business and he started like with a lawnmower and he's like, I'm going to cut my neighbor's lawns. And fast forward two years later, he's a senior now, like he has a truck, he has a trailer, he has like six or seven different pieces of equipment. He's, have, he's hiring other students to work for him. And he's getting to the point now where he's big enough that he needs to start protecting himself. And you know, the advice was, all right, you go talk to a, a professional about how to set this up and make sure that you are covering yourself properly. Yeah. Cause yeah, he, he was talking about a lot of assets and he was making probably like 60 grand a year. Like this kid's killing it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I'm, I'm doing it wrong guys. But <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was time at that point. He was beyond the simple startup part and he was into like a real business. This is what he wants to do with um, you know, at least the short term foreseeable future. So right. yeah, don't worry about that in, in the beginning. It's not an important aspect. Um, right, if you, and if he had been worried about, like, you know, uh, what's the best way to own a car and a lawnmower, uh, he might not have gotten to where he is. Yeah. And um, if you do have a kid, you know, this does happen sometimes, a kid who invents something new, um, writes something that needs to be trademarked or copyrighted. Again, if, you, if it gets to a big enough point where you're like, okay, it's important to now protect this, then you go seek out help in doing that. But in the beginning, don't get bogged down with it. Just start. That's kind of yeah, the, exactly. that key information. Just get started. Um, all right. So Karen asked, I'm not business minded, but my tween daughter is. She wants to start her own business and has some ideas, but is getting frustrated with me for holding her back. I'd love to um, you know, find out ways that I can support my daughter as entrepreneurship seems to be her thing. Like, so if we have a parent who has a kid who's really interested in like starting a business, doing it, but the parent doesn't really feel comfortable guiding or helping, like, what advice would you give them? Well, you know, sometimes it's a matter of just talking things through with somebody. Uh, you know, if you look at the Socratic method of teaching, uh, they didn't really teach. They just asked a lot of questions mm -hmm. and they let the students come to their own conclusions. Um, and I think it's easier to do something like that if you have a guide. So if you're using something like the simple startup and you're having your daughter read through that and then she's asking you questions and you're asking her questions back, she'll start to you know, see things or start to be able to come to conclusions. Um, you know, two other things I would say about that. Uh, you know, my wife and I have a joke that's, uh, you know, you can always Google your way to success. Uh, so, you know, if your daughter has a question about business and you don't know the answer to it, uh, just jump on Google, you know, spend half an hour looking up how different people deal with problems like that. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying put children on there, but as the adult, you can go on there and filter the information and then feed that back to your daughter. Yeah. And, and yeah, another thing would be if you can find a local business owner, uh, maybe they'd be willing to meet with your daughter once or twice a month uh, over a cup of coffee or lunch or something like that and just act as a mentor. Um, you know, a lot of business owners are happy to do that. Uh, so, you know, there's always the possibility for that as well. That's an awesome idea finding mentors, um, for your kids or your class. Um, I've definitely done that with some of my own classes. I've had local business owners come in and like, they'll talk to the students and they'll spend like an hour after we agreed, like for the time, just sitting down with each business and talking through ideas with them. So yeah, that's a really cool idea to do. Um, all right. So let's see. Annette asked, would it be, it would be awesome if he could do a Zoom class that we could sign our kids up for. So are you offering any uh, <laughs> public classes at the moment? It, yeah, I haven't, I recorded a handful of the classes that we were doing, mm -hmm. uh, but it was mainly because uh, kids weren't able to attend. Um, yeah, I know you're running a program online for like a summer camp style yes. program. Uh, so, you yeah, know, people could look into that. Uh, yeah, I don't have any plans of running another program at the moment. Uh, our next son is seven, so maybe in two or three years when he's 10, uh, I'll do it again. But I don't have any plans in the short term of doing it. No, and I think the important part of this conversation is that it's 
it's something you can DIY. Like this doesn't require a professional entrepreneur to be your, your lead, your guide. Like anybody can do this right. with, with the guides in place. And the simple startup is something you can use to help you out. There's a student version. There's an instructor version. The instructor version kind of has a little bit more guidance, especially for that parent or teacher who isn't quite sure about how to start a business. And going back to the parent who doesn't really seem to feel like they're very comfortable with doing this, don't forget that all of you have experience, maybe not as a business owner, but as a customer. And you can always draw on that experience when you're talking to your kid, when you say, okay, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to act as the role of the customer here. Here are the questions I would have about buying your product or service and you know, engage with your kid that way and really kind of push them on like, all right, um, that price is too high because I can get it cheaper over here. Like, what are you going to do about that? Or um, your product looks like it might break a little too easily compared to something else I would buy. What can you do about that? Like, there's lots of things that you can bring from your own experience, even if you don't have experience of running a business. Yeah, exactly. All right, final question. Teresa asked, how long was the program you ran? I think you said you were meeting twice a week on like a Zoom call or video call to... Um, go through lessons. How long were those lessons as well? Yeah. So for us, it ran about six and a half weeks. Uh, and we did it twice a week for about an hour each time. And yeah, I put together a PowerPoint uh, based on the book and would just talk through the slides with kids, give them you know, some of the experiences I've had or things I've seen as examples. And then as we started going through, once the kids started having their own business ideas, I would try and use their businesses as examples. Yeah, uh, things like if you're making food and you're trying to market it, yeah, your marketing has to be pretty clean, and uh, yeah, you don't you don't want things that are too busy and things like that because it'll maybe think people will think, oh, maybe the food or the kitchen isn't that clean if it's not, yeah, if the marketing doesn't look good or yeah, it just things like that, that maybe as a kid you wouldn't think about, but as a consumer you would. Um, And then, you know, there was a little bit, not a lot of extra work uh, when I would assign something to the kids. Like, you know, when I had them sketch out their business plan, uh, you know, their idea and like the different factors, I probably spent another half hour on each one of those feeding back uh, individually to each of the kids, you know, have you thought about doing it this way or what about this or, you know, comments like that for the kids. Uh, same with marketing and things like that. Yeah. You know, a little bit of one-to-one time with each of the kids as well. Not separate calls, but just, yeah, you know, they would email something in and I would write out some feedback and send it back to them. Yeah. Perfect. All right, Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, oh, my pleasure. If anyone has questions, is there a way they could get in touch with you? Uh, yeah. Email is probably the best way. It's dmckeegan at greenbacktaxservices.com. Uh, I'm also on Facebook and you know, usual places. <laughs> Perfect. I'll add those um, in the notes for the, or the comment section for this video as well. Awesome. All right, Dave, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, if any of you guys have questions or you want to get in touch with me or learn more about starting um, you know, a simple startup business, you can find more information at thesimplestartup.com or my email is rob at thesimplestartup.com. Thanks so much, Dave. Awesome. Thank you very much. 